Back here at Texas Star for the Scratch Division Step Ladder Finals. Sorry, Eric. Can't do it. Ryan Lee in his first career title match. We're bowling endless 10th today, so no matter who's behind after 10 frames, they still have a chance if they strike on their last ball of the game. Doesn't matter if it's three in a row in the 10th or spare strike in the 10th, that gives the trailing person an opportunity to catch up 10 pins at a time as long as they keep on striking. Of course, taking on Copsy Cortez Shank at the other end of the spectrum, our all time titles leader now with 60 million career wins. I think it's like 102. It's 65, right? Once he finally got to 64, I, I like stopped. It's more than it's more than Kyle. That's what I know now. So, however, Ryan Lee showing no fear about this situation. He's a quickly rising star on tour. He's opened up with three in a row against Tez's two spares. Tez is putting some uh, strap on the ball today. Eric said he's taking credit for five of those titles. Covering some boards. Is that right? A lot of oil in the middle today. Fairly house-ish pattern, about a five or six one ratio. So he's elected to use a medium strength ball, but really kind of hit up on it. Not a lot of ball speed, but he's uh, using more than usual hand rotation. Covering a lot of boards. And, oh! oh tip it. Yes! Oh. By the thinnest of margins, it tips. If any part of the machine touches that pin, even though it was obviously going to fall, you would have to reset it, and it just barely fell over before the machinery touched it. Like most Vegas centers, there's uh, messengers of plenty here. They have uh, juicy sidewalls in Vegas. My goodness, yes. They do. Juicy. Juicy. Like a steak. That's right. Like an Austin's ribeye. Oh. Ryan uh, kept that ball in the puddle. No, Austin's at the steakhouse here. It's like the best thing down there. Oh my god. They have a, they have a shocking. They have a fantastic steakhouse here, actually. No mulligans this time. That would have worked last week. Well, it does a sort of semi. Oh! Wow. He did that dead flat, almost backup thing at it, and one of the bad breaks in bowling. He's wrapping a washout. Wrapping a washout or chopping a 610, which is more frustrating? I think they're the two most frustrating chopping. things. Chopping. 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 Because it's even closer. Yeah. 84 through <laughs> 4 right now. And that gives Tez a 5 pin lead. Ryan has a lot of hand rotation. Shot a 300 game earlier this year. And his previous, just this season. Previous career high finish was third in the Baker team events in SoCal. This is his first singles top five. <laughs> yep, all over that one. Sounds like a strike. Three in a row, 15 pin lead for Tez. He can extend to 25. Top seed today at plus 361. Very consistent bowling. A low game of 210 and a high of 249. Uh, Nick Pollock had the high game of everybody of 290 today. Eric Hatchett had seven more in front lines. Yeah, Didn't convert any of them. 276 with a bucket. Yeah. And shreds that rack. It's a play on words Oh, I didn't even notice that was a microphone on his jersey. He's going to drop the mic and walk out too. <laughs> I, I did not notice that. I thought it was like a, a dolphin thing going on or something. <laughs> Nobody, nobody wants to wear it. Oh. 52 is the lane's given some bowlers problems. It gave Pollock fits. He couldn't get a ball to wrinkle. That time the ball checked up on him when he got it to the right too early. So maybe it's the more over-under of the two lanes. When the lanes are quote-unquote easy like they sort of were today, that's really one of the few things that can cause bowlers that are that good this uh, any sort of problem is hitting some over-under. There's so much oil in the middle that you can't get a ball to wrinkle, and they're so dry outside that you get too much friction. Pair to pair is always different at Texas. And we're happy to be here at Texas to see this guy again. We missed him in December. It was not the same. It was awesome, but it wasn't the same. 
This man has done so much for us and bowling. Oh, we debt of gratitude to the incredible Jerry Francamato and a great shot from Lee. Still plenty of match. He's got to remember that he's never out of it, but the last thing you want to do is need nine in a row to win your match. <laughs> Only one bowler has lost a title match as the top seed by being endless tenth framed. It's a good trivia question. Only happened once. We do endless tenth at least once a year in every conference. Is there somebody ten seconds to try to figure out a total score? Ten more seconds? All right. The uh, 541 mark. It's a famous JBT bowler. He was not happy about it. Extremely not happy about it. All right, can I take a guess? Yes. Kyle? No. Ooh. Famous. No answer from Joe Duran. Hold on. Yes. Are they current? No. Okay. Marshall Kent. No. Cameron Weir. No. Me. No. Everett. Yes. Evan is not the answer. Ever got endless tennis today. <laughs> I did. Oh yeah. The, ans the answer is Cameron Smith lost an endless ten in, a, in a Albuquerque really? to a Colorado bowler whose actual name was Jack Frost. Jack Frost. I could not believe it. For Jack Frost's only JBT title. It's pretty cold in Colorado. It was it was that. very cold that day. And I can believe it. <laughs> Cameron stayed there like I like packed up and left. He was still sitting on the approach. Sitting I called Silver like five hours later. I just came and sat there and waited on hold. Man, hello. Wow. Wait, he sat down. He was pretty upset, but he's much older and wiser now. Lee would love to have a double here to start to climb back in, but instead creeps up high again. So now the best he can do is 224. Tez is rolling along at a 237 pace, so if Tez doesn't double again, Ryan can get within 13 pins, but count is hugely important in endless 10th. Because anything less than a strike is a zero once you get to the endless 10th part, so as long as you're ahead in count, it's like picking up an extra strike. And this kid, kid has a powerful strike ball, so if he can get there, it's a... Uh, Certainly within his capabilities. Another uh, trivia question here. Yes, sir. Anybody ever shot a 299 in Los Angeles Town? No, but someone came, Someone had the chance to do that, right? Who was that? It was here, in the lobby, right? Was I here? I'm not really Chase? thinking. Chase and Eric? No, I think it was Eric. Was that the Chase and Eric match? At, at Sunset? I should remember the details, but I don't, but it might have been Eric, but he had 299, but he, which, yeah, it was Eric who shot 299, obviously you're done at 299, you don't get an endless 10th. Someone had to throw like eight in a row to beat him, and they got to like five or six. I remember him Place went nuts. Chase. It's really exciting. Was it three to 299? Cortez not looking like he has any problem with the right-hand lane, where other folks have struggled. So one way to fight the over-under is to keep the ball in the under the whole time, and that's essentially what Cortez is doing. He's keeping the ball in the oil as long as possible, using that slower ball speed and a little bit extra finger pressure, I think, to get that ball to wrinkle even though it's in the oiliest part of the lane. One of his extremely large bag of tricks. Now he just needs to put as much distance as possible between him and Lee. Is he baby walking right now? No. Of course, the best situation for Cortez is to also have the endless tenth, which now means he would have to strike out, which would put him in a great position because that would give him 257. And this is kind of the weird shot in endless tenth because once you get the first one, you have to get the second one. It's almost like spare strike would feel better. <laughs> Look how slow that one was. Wow, and it just. That looked a little slower even than the other ones, and it just hook stopped right at the pocket. That's uh, ideal for him. So now spare strike doesn't look as good anymore. But it would still look better than strike strike nine. If he doesn't strike in this one, I mean, the, the, the negative thoughts will go through his head. Oh, I led this tournament all day long. I'm up by 30 no matter what, and I still have a chance to lose. He wants it to wheel. Oh, and he doesn't get it. Look, look, it's, look that's, the thoughts are going right now. See, I get, Tez is one of the smartest kids I've ever met, and I guarantee you that's exactly what's going through his head right now. As he is done at 254, he can't advance his score any further than that. 
and four is a really interesting count number for him to end at there because it, well, the fact that it ended with a four makes a big difference. First things first. Okay, it's, even though he didn't strike out, it's still not over, but he's just cost himself two more strikes being necessary because now he spares strikes for 204. He would need the next five strikes to tie. He'd continue bowling and need the sixth strike to win the match. So he needs to spare this up and get the next six six strikes to win the match. I always thought that you had to strike out to get an endless count. You only have to get the last one. You have to strike on your fill ball. But now he first things first, he has to convert the bucket, which he does running away. He had no business even making that spare that way. Wow. Got baseball. Very lucky to make the spare. Now he must strike on this shot. If he does, he'll alternate lanes, meaning to strike six more times to win, and there's nothing Tez can do about it. It's not it's, it's a guy we haven't seen much, but that's a powerful strike ball. I said it before. And it's the most uncomfortable feeling on the planet for Shank. Has to strike on this ball for it to matter though. And he gets the strike. Wow. All right, Scratch Fish Bowlers, here's the situation. Cortez does not have the endless tenth. He's frozen at 2.54. Ryan does trigger the endless tenth, but he's at 2.04. So Ryan, you're now going to move over to the left-hand lane and alternate the rest of the time. You need six strikes to win the tournament, alternating those lanes. If you get five strikes and don't strike on the sixth, we'll explain what happens after that. Uh-oh. And Jerry, we need the pin spotters on it. Huh? I'm sorry. Can we, we need the pin spotters. What are we doing? We just, it's a tiebreaker. I'll explain in a second if you turn the pin spotters on. Sure. <laughs> I'm waiting to turn cosmic on. I know you are. <laughs> we have four games set, and that's what it was programmed in for. You said that they're starting. Pin spotters are fine, Jerry. We don't. That means whoever wins, they have a party waiting for them. Yes. The second they're done, the, the cosmic go will go on. That means the party starts. Hey, it's a half hour early, so I'm... Hopefully strikes for half an hour. Control desk, I need 51 and 52. Turn back on, please. It's our own very own Kirk Von Kruger right here. <laughs> by PBA... Can, can you say, by PBA rule? <laughs> By PBA is. rule. And what do you need up there? Just anything. They just need to throw shots. Yeah. He's not even as and just, just put a letter in one letter. By PBA rule. That, that's that's my complete Kirk Von Kruger imitation. Yes, thank you. Very nice. You're welcome. You just want some camera time. Oh, thank, yeah, thanks. So, if you strike on your fill ball, you get the endless 10th frame. You get to continue throwing shots as long as you continue to strike. So, Cortez is done at 254 because he didn't strike on his fill ball. I'm, I'm sorry. Can we hit start play? It's on. It's trying to come on. There we go. So, Tez is. No, no, don't, don't throw it yet because the sweep's going to come down. This, by the way, is an unfortunate break for Ryan, but we didn't anticipate this little Sorry detail. About no, the hiccup. No, no, no hiccup. It was a four-game yeah. tag. The done. sweep is going to come down eventually. It's kind of like icing the kicker here. It's it what's it's going on. feels like an endless 10th <laughs> So This literally is an endless 10th <laughs> But Ryan doing the right thing. He's just trying to stay calm and relaxed in the moment. Put him in the moment of 55 and 56. There they go. Okay. Now All you right. can bolt. Going through this okay, game. so now this is an endless 10th frame. He struck on his throw ball, Cortez didn't. So even though Ryan finished at 204, he can now continue to stri strike as long as he continues to strike, getting 10 things on the score each time. So he needs to throw the next five oh, gotcha. alternating okay. lanes to tie. In the PBA yes. Yeah, gotcha. that's they did, and nobody. All right, strike. tough scenario for Ryan. Here's the first shot. There's the first strike. Good. I'm glad he struck on that one. Now it's not yes. our fault. Yes. Well, it's not anybody's fault, my goodness. Was it the team event that they did in this time? No, it was a regular. Was, yeah. was it team yep. event before, right? Yep. Was it? Oh, you look at my people. Good job. Okay, well done. I don't have to Google it now. Wait till you see what we throw at you tomorrow, Scratch right. Division. Let's Tomorrow's Valentine's. Lane. Tomorrow's Valentine's Day, so it's Love the Lanes. We'll show you tomorrow. Look at you. Five more strikes to go for Ryan. Good. 
There is it. You know when they play a, a best of seven series, it's as soon as someone goes up one and zero, it feels like all the momentum goes the other way, and then they win this, and then it goes one one, and they go, oh, now they're gonna win four to one. It feels like as soon as you get the first one, you're never gonna miss again. This would be a flat out stinker for Tez if it happens, but what an opportunity for Lee right here to get to 234. And. Oh! A little early for Tez. The church ends in a valiant effort and a relieved Cortez Shank wins title number 754,000 and a half. Great effort from Ryan. He's going to get one of those titles really soon. He keeps falling like that. Cosmic on, sir. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That was, uh, boy, that was your, your close-up right there. It's a party for you, Tez. Oh, yeah. Tez is going to drop the mic and go on his way. Congratulations to Cortez and Ryan and everybody else, too, and Avery and all of our champs and finalists today. We'll do it again tomorrow on Valentine's Day. Well, we'll see if they indeed love the lane. I love the lane.